There's an interesting item uh, in the news about Hugo Chavez. He uh, came back from chemotherapy and he uh, decided to uh, move his gold from Switzerland to three different uh, vaults uh, uh, and also some cash, three different vaults in China, Russia and uh, Brazil. This might uh, be uh, indicate several things. Uh, it's not really clear what it is. Uh, if you are thinking about war and world war and, and, and the reliability of his gold stores in Switzerland, that's a fair uh, a fair uh, thing to say because of course uh, you know if there's going to be an armed conflict uh, which is open and across the Atlantic, then uh, then how are you going to move that gold from Switzerland to wherever you want to have it in order to be able to trade? How are you going to use it to uh, to buy arms and all that stuff? Because that's the nice thing about gold. It doesn't require any trust in order to be used. It can be melted into other uh, denominations, coins, whatever. Uh, people, uh, you know, it's, it's anonymous. Um, and, um, you know, whenever somebody has done something for you in, or in, in return for gold, that person can flee to a, to a region of the world where there's no war going on. People will still accept the money, and you'll have a life. So it's it's just like a, it's a super insurance policy uh, type of money. That's why it's so smart to have. But you have to have it yourself, physically. Now, logically, if that was the case, if the case was real, uh, war, worry about war, then he might all have have, have brought it all to Venezuela uh, and kept it himself. That's clearly not the case. And maybe that is because of the strategic and significance of it, because Switzerland always has uh, has been the, let's say the, the neutrality uh, base, the base where here you know, where it was a neutral country, it's very hard to conquer by the way because it's you know, <laughs> surrounded by mountains, but uh, it has to be uh, it has been kind of a referee country. So if you keep your gold there, you're not really participating in any strategic positioning. If you are, if you want to wage war, then you have to divide your, uh, your your gold to regions where arms can be made and shipped from, where soldiers can come from, where you can meld it uh, to, uh, you know, where you can get help. So what you would say, well, maybe that's going on. Um, that is possible. I think something else is actually uh, happening, which is much more practical and logical, and that is that he simply. Uh, in doing that, in order to uh, facilitate a trade system based on gold-backed uh, uh, credit, or not gold-backed, but gold guarantees. <coughs> because what I mean is that if you if you want to buy solar panels in China from Holland, you cannot easily do that, because uh, you have your money in Holland, the guy has the solar panels in China, he has to put them on the boat uh, to, to you, and you can't really witness that, you could, but it's very elaborate, you don't want to give your money to the guy in China directly. You won't want to like, make, a, make a big parcel and send him a million uh, euros because you haven't had your solar panels yet. And he's not going to ship solar panels before he sees the money. So there's a problem there in international trade, which uh, is why there are international banks. Because what happens then is that uh, during the trade, during the, let's say, the moment the Chinese person ships the, the, the solar panels on a boat, he is no longer in control of them but they are insured by the intermediary, the banks, uh, until they arrive in Rotterdam and I can see them and I can take uh, possession of them. And what happens is that the bank in China has a million dollars. Uh, that's not the same million dollars as I, I have in Holland because it's a big bank, they don't really need to transfer that money. Uh, and, um, and the moment I take so during the journey, that million dollars insures uh, the, lo the, the, the the load, the container, for the seller, and as soon as, but he doesn't have access to that money yet, but as soon as I am in Holland, I sign the contract, uh, you know, uh, I receive this container, the bank releases that million to, to the guy in China, and my million in Holland is suddenly no, more, no longer my million, it's, it's now owned by the bank. So there's a whole shuffle going on behind that, and if you would have to have international trade, uh, with not fiat currency but gold, you would have to either, you, you can do two things, if you don't have uh, agreements and you don't have uh, uh, some kind of trust, then you would have to move your gold in opposite directions, so you basically have to send some emissary with a, with a uh, big uh, truck of gold towards, uh, towards China uh, to drive to, to near where the factory is, see, let that guy with the truck see the guy 
from the factory ship, ship the containers to Holland. Then uh, a few weeks later, get a phone call from me saying, "Okay, yeah, you can you can now, uh, you know, the Chinese person can already uh, see the gold and stuff like that." You have to hand it over. It's, it's elaborate. That's basically because the transaction has it has a, uh, internationally has a has a delay in it, in which there is a uncertainty about can this person pay and and will this person deliver. Uh, to solve that, you have to have uh, gold reserves on all continents, on all participants' uh, territories, that you can simply uh, transfer ownership of through paper, and that you have, and that system you then have, have to enforce, which is uh, which is not difficult if it's about small quantities, because you know, let's say, uh, that, that that's just then it's just a system of of payment. So I think the latter, that thing is going on, that, that Chavez is basically going with the brick and preparing uh, their widely discussed uh, uh, gold-based uh, uh, world trade system. And, uh, and it's possible, the problem with it is of course that, you, that you, if you have trade imbalances, then you have to resolve them by moving actual gold. Uh, and this is of course the... the the problem that the U.S. solved by moving off away from the gold standard because they were buying a lot of oil, which is basically a trade imbalance, uh, and they would have to move if the gold standard would have been maintained, gold for gold for dollars, they would have had to move gold to the Middle East in order to pay for the oil. But that would have, of course, shifted uh, the strategic ability of territories to defend themselves because they would have less gold to bribe whoever it is they needed to bribe in order to win any war. Uh, and that's why they went off the gold standard. Um, it's interesting. That, all, that whole trade imbalance uh, aspect is what is also fundamentally wrong with Bitcoin, by the way. That's why I completely don't believe in it. And I got a reply by somebody saying, well, but it's a really complicated uh, uh, algorithm. And, uh, and uh, yes, your wallet can be stolen, but any wallet can be stolen. Well... Bitcoin simply is not going to work because it is uh, it has all the weaknesses of a hackable uh, IT system, which means that you have to invest into your safety security of your system, and that's very difficult and it's not cost effective after a while. Uh, second of all, it's a fiat 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 currency. It's really worth nothing. Uh, so yeah, I have a Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Well, as long as people want to have it, it's fine. If people are not interested in it, it's over. And then, if they want to, let's say, so the trade imbalance problem comes in, uh, that let's say I have a million dollars equivalent Bitcoin, which is already the wrong way to think about it. You should never, uh, I made a video about it earlier, you should never try to exchange Bitcoins for anything. You should simply, if you want to use it, you have to use it as, a, as, a, as an unexchangeable currency. You cannot exchange it into dollars. You can only exchange it into assets. That's something different. But uh, let's say, but the way that people treat it right now is that they say, well, oh, but I have uh, bitcoins now at the value of a million dollars. And uh, but then you want to buy something in New Zealand, or you want to buy something uh, in, in your own street, or something like that. You can't easily do that. You have to find a bitcoin dollar exchange, uh, and that bitcoin dollar exchange has to have a million dollars in reserve if you want to cash in on your bitcoin. And of course, those exchanges don't have that. That's why the one, the, the, the crash happened. The one exchange happened because people tried to convert their bitcoins. And of course, these people ran out of dollars. And especially now that the value of bitcoin dollars or bitcoins seem to be increasing in terms of dollars, it's a losing, it's a losing game to be the exchanger. Because, uh, you know, you start an exchange, you say, well, okay, then people get into the game, they pay five dollars to get into the game. Then, uh, the, let's say, so you accumulate the money of these people, the dollars, while they hand over the bitcoins. Uh, after a while, people say speculatively maybe, or due, due to promotion, there's enormous demand. And people will buy, uh, let's, say the, let's say, number one to number nine has paid five dollars for their bitcoins. So you have... $45 in your cash register. Then suddenly there's a media item that says bitcoins are worth $100 per, per piece. And these number one to number nine, so 
maybe somebody arrives there and, and, and you can sell him a Bitcoin for $100 in t in, in, instead, of, uh, instead of $5. And that's profit. But if the 1 to 9 come back and say, well, uh, now Bitcoin is worth $100, so I want to cash in. You, you, you got $45 of these people and you have to pay them $900 in total. That's not a winning strategy, so nobody's going to do that. That's that's one of the flaws. But just to come back to the trade imbalances and so, you have to have that cash on hand as well. And that's what banks have. They have they move around cash in order to make sure that when somebody tries to to change that fiat currency number into a fiat currency uh, uh, real uh, <laughs> worthless uh, paper certificate, there's actually some something there to give that person. And there's a maximum to what you can take from a bank, actually. But uh, So these are my thoughts about the gold move, and also about Bitcoin, apparently. And uh, thanks for listening.